Hello, today we will discuss Exenatid, an anti-diabetic medication. And Exenatid is an injectable medication approved to treat type 2 diabetes and it works to control high blood glucose levels. And Exenatid can be used alone or with other medications depending on the patient's needs. So Exenatid has internationally a recognized trade name of Bayetta or Bidurion. And if you're familiar with anti-diabetic medications, you may notice that the Exenatid comes in an injection pen, similar to other medicines such as Liraglutid called Victoza and Dulaglutid called Trulicity. And the similarity is because Exenatid also belongs to the family of GLP-1 agonists. So the GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1 and while agonists refer to the agents that activate the receptors in some special cells called the beta cells within the organ pancreas to secrete insulin which then further goes into the blood and then moves glucose or sugar from the blood into the cells and GLP-1 agonists have many functions in the body that benefit people with type 2 diabetes. And to remember the names of the GLP-1 agonists, the acronym CELL-D makes it very easy. CELL-D is simple to recall as these medications can be expensive at the moment. And S stands for semaglutid, E for exenatid, L for elixisenatid, L for liraglutid, and finally D for dulaglutid. And it is good to keep in mind that because these injection pens that contain the medicine may look similar and it is always good to ensure that you check the label on any medication before using it. And if you are familiar with diabetes as a disease, you would know that the problem in diabetes is that the pancreatic beta cells reduce in number until insulin cannot be produced by the body any, any longer. And however, the GLP-1 agonists now, which include exenatid, stimulate the growth of these cells and thereby enhance the secretion of insulin from these pancreatic beta cells. And another mechanism of exenatid and other GLP-1 receptor agonists is to reduce the inappropriate glucagon secretion. And in simple terms, glucagon is a molecule similar to insulin but works as its counterpart, meaning that glucagon acts in an opposition to insulin. So instead of moving glucose into blood cells, it promotes and increases glucose in the blood. Okay? Exenatid and other GLP-1 receptor agonists can prevent the effects of glucagon, so, when exenatase is in the body, it will reduce the inappropriate secretion of these glucagon molecules and therefore the overall impact causes an increased amount of insulin while having a reduced amount of glucagon. And in essence, this means it will reduce glucose in the blood, which is the primary goal in diabetic patients. So exenatid has many advantages over other diabetic medications. The one benefit of exenatid is that it improves insulin sensitivity. As mentioned before, it enhances the secretion of insulin from the pancreatic beta cells while stimulating the growth of these insulin producing cells. And therefore it increases your body's insulin sensitivity as the overall effect and causes a raised amount of insulin while reducing glucagon, which is immensely beneficial in diabetic patients. Note that this is why patients who are already using insulin and sulfonylurea treatment need to have their dosage reduced a little bit before starting GLP-1 agonist, including exenatid, for example. The second benefit is that it has a very high glycemic efficacy compared with the other diabetic me medications. So glycemic efficacy just means how good the medicine is at lowering blood glucose levels. Therefore, we can say now that exenatid has a good glucose lowering effect in the body. Third benefit is that the administration of exenatid is pretty straightforward. The medication comes in two types, Bayetta, and this is a short acting and is injected twice daily, while Bidurion is long acting and is injected once weekly. So Exenatid has some disadvantages also like any other medication. One simple drawback is that some patients prefer oral medicines. But Exenatid does not favor this preference since it is only available as an injection. Another disadvantage is that some patients experience a loss of appetite and gastrointestinal side effects. And we will expand on this later on. So before we give now Exenatid, uh, some parameters such as your weight, your glucose levels in the blood and hemoglobin A1c have to be checked. So hemoglobin is the molecule that transports oxygen in your body and hemoglobin A1c refers to the glycated part, meaning the sugar attached to this hemoglobin. And this sugar attachment usually happens when glucose is very high in the body for an extended time. So therefore, the blood level measurement will show now that this patient has a chronically very high level. 
Notably, this, this result is not only at the time of the hemoglobin A1C measurement, but for a long duration, such as, for example, three months or more. And it is sensible to keep checking these parameters mentioned before and ensure the kidney and the pancreas and the gallbladder are functioning well as you, as you use this medicine. Contraindications need to be excluded now before starting any medications. And they make uh, taking medicine inadvisable because it would rather uh, be harmful to the patient. So exonatid is no exception. So some things have to be ruled out now. Uh, more straightforward, in more straightforward terms, we could say that the medication to know, um, the contraindication to know, first of all, is uh, that the hypersensitivity that you can see in many other medications uh, can also be seen with exonatid. So if you ask if the patient had an allergy before, and if so, then don't use this medication. For the second contraindication, we require the details of the patient's medical history, and we can ask if the patient has, a, for example, a personal history or family history of medullary thyroid cancer. Or personal so personal history just means that the patient have had medullary thyroid cancer in his life. And it is, is it known or not? Family history uh, means just uh, that it was some family member having this type of cancer. And if yes, then exonatid should not be given. Third contraindication is uh, whether the patient had multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or MEN2. And if so, then exonatid is not advised. For the next uh, contraindication, I would say that we ask if the patient has a personal history or family history of, for example, pancreatitis or kidney disease. Uh, personal history means, as we said, did the patient have pancreatitis or kidney illness in his life? Family history would refer to if, uh, if some family member had it. Uh, and if yes, then exonatid is not advised, since it can be very harmful in such cases. So next contraindication is whether the patient is pregnant or breastfeeding. If so, exonatid is not advised. However, it can be used, but it will require careful monitoring by the doctor who prescribed it. So uh, last contraindication is gastroparesis, which means that patient is having difficulty digesting food. And one of the effects of GLP-1 receptor agonist is to slow down the gastric emptying. And if the patient already has difficulty digesting and, and, and then we slow down it even further, that can be dangerous. So exonatid is not advised if that is the case, okay? Exonatid is administered with a pre-filled Injectopen, similar to that of insulin or lixacinatid, the injectopen comes in two distinct colors, so you can easily differentiate the types. Bayetta has a blue and yellow injectopen, while Bidurion has an injectopen in a gray or white color, often with an orange uh, cover. So before taking any medication, make sure to read the label correctly. Bayetta is short-acting, while Bidurion is long-acting. And both types of exonatid should be subcutaneous injected into the abdomen, thigh, or upper arm. And we administer Bayetta twice daily, usually during an hour before you eat a breakfast and the dinner. The patient has to make sure that there are at least six hours in between the two doses. And it is advisable to even set an alarm clock or notification in the phone for the medication time or have a family member remind you to take it. And it is also advised that you use Bayetta with a starting subcutaneous dose of five micrograms daily. However, this can be changed to 10 micrograms twice daily for additional glycemic control if the initial doses did not improve blood glucose levels. Additionally, Glycemic control means improving your blood glucose, control to keep it in normal levels. And suppose uh, you forget to use Bayetta before, you, before the usual meal, for instance, and if you miss it before the breakfast, note that you do not inject it after you have eaten. Instead, use it before your next meal, which means that you miss those should be skipped and resumed at the next scheduled dose. And it is best to store your unopened packs of Bayetta and Bidurian in a refrigerator between two to eight uh, degrees Celsius to not freeze it uh, and make sure to keep it away from direct heat and sunlight. And we administer Bidurian now once weekly at any time of the day, regardless of the meal. However, Bidurian must be given on the same day each week. So to do it effectively, you pick a day like Sunday and which you can easily remember. Then you set the reminder uh, on your phone or let somebody notify you on those days. However, suppose you forget here also the dose of Bidurian. When should it be administered again? If there are less than three days until the next scheduled dose, skip the missed dose and resume at the next scheduled dose. 
Therefore, bidurium should be given as soon as possible, within three days. And the time between the two injections should be at least 72 hours. And the recommended dosage of bidurium is 2 mg once weekly. And let's now discuss some important details related to the bietta and bidurium. Pre-treatment with short-acting exenatate or bietta is not needed before starting with long-acting exenatate or bidurium. Another interesting point is that when switching from short-acting exenatate or bietta to long-acting exenatate or bidurium, the patient must stop taking the bietta for at least one day. So once the patient stops bietta, one day later, the patient can start with bidurian treatment. And once such a switch from a short-acting exenatid, so bietta to a long-acting exenatid, bidurian is made, then there will be an increased blood glucose levels for about two to four weeks. And also note that no dosage adjustment is necessary for liver insufficiency patients, which is very good news. However, watch out when starting exenatid use or when increasing the dose of the medication. So watch out. So now let's look at how to inject yourself with exenatid, which we know has trade names of bietta and bidurion. The following steps are specifically for bidurion. However, injecting bietta has very similar steps. Remember to always prime the needle before injecting exenatid. Priming is only done the first time you, you use the new injector pen. So start by pulling the button up then turn the pen with the needle pointing upwards and gently tap it and push the injector button for a few drops to come out, ensuring no air bubbles in the syringe. And the solution should appear clear, colorless. Okay? The first step is to select an injection site, whether the upper arm, thigh or abdomen, disinfect the skin, remember to rotate the injection sites for any following injections. And even if you take insulin injections, please choose an alternative location, so not, not at the same spot. Second step is to shake the out injector for about 15 seconds to mix the medication and the mixture should look cloudy. Third step is to turn the bottom of the auto injector to the left to unlock it and next turn the cap counterclockwise so the green shield will pop up. And make sure to disinfect the skin area of the abdomen and then puncture the skin and press the bu button and hold it for 15 seconds until the orange bar appears. And the last step is to remove the injector pen from your skin, safely dispose the sharp needle and that was it. Exenatid has several benefits but one of its main drawbacks was its side effects, mainly related to digestion. In less than in less than 10% of cases actually. The most common side effects are all kinds of abdominal discomfort and loss of appetite. And the possible ga uh, gastrointestinal problems include, for example, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, flatulence, abdominal pain, and so on. Injection site reactions can also occur, but these are rare and can occur with any injected medication. And we have covered now, general, general information and its uses, what to check before giving the medication, the steps on administering it, the dosage and its benefits and side effects. And now let's have a summary to highlight these key points. So Exenatid is an anti-diabetic medication and it is in the category of GLP-1 agonist. The GLP-1 agonists include semaglutid, exenatid, lixisenatid, liraglutid and dulaglutid. And remember the acronym of CELL-D for GLP-1 agonists. The trade names of exenatid are bietta and bidurion. Exenatid is explicitly used as a medication in diabetes mellitus mellitus type 2 and can be used alone or in another medication with another medication so the recommended recommendation of the type uh, short acting or or so is uh, we have for example 5 and 10 microgram uh, of uh, the short acting one the long acting one by durian has a usual dose of 2 milligram once weekly and benefits of exenatid are for example we have high glycemic efficacy meaning it improves the insulin sensitivity it has an excellent glucose lowering effect uh, the other advantage was that it is easy to administer. Additionally, we can say that it is unique since uh, it's possible to have it either in a short-acting form, the bietta, or in a long-acting form, the bidurium, depending on the patient's needs. So I think this was enough. Thank you very much for listening. Take care and look at the other videos also. Bye-bye.